actually a very cool evening here and I'm so excited to be with you again. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? Yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about a topic about which I am really passionate. I'm going to be talking about gender-based violence. And I'm hearing someone saying to me, this does not concern me at all. You know, I mean, I'm disturbed about it and everything, but this is their issue and let you remain with them. I think this is actually an issue about which every single person should be concerned and every one of us, you know, uh, it's our issue. Uh, recently, um, we've seen a rise in gender-based violence, violence and uh, the whole world is putting the spotlight on gender-based violence and Nigeria should be no different, especially when in the news, daily, we have issues of um, husbands killing their wives, killing themselves, uh, leaving often children to suffer alone. We have issues of wives uh, killing their spouses. Uh, one, other, uh, one other woman was sentenced not too long ago. And we have issues like this. So we cannot afford to turn our backs on gender-based violence. Uh, let's first of all define gender-based violence. Uh, gender-based violence is violence that is meted on an individual on the basis of his biological sex as being male or female or his gender identity the gender roles that he chooses to play and when we talk about gender based violence it includes a wide range of um, uh, activities it includes abuse you know includes coercion includes deprivation includes discrimination includes threats you know uh, and others you know method as on as an out on an individual whether in a private or in the public uh, violence of a sexual nature violence violence of uh, a physical nature violence of uh, a verbal nature uh, of a uh, psychological nature and emotional nature you know and all of this that's what we mean by gender-based violence and they are actually several types of gender-based violence you know uh stuff like rape you know we have rape we have uh, forced and early marriages we have female genital mutilation we have uh, discrimination based on uh, inheritance when it concerns inheritance we have widowhood rights you know we have sexual harassment uh we have intimate partner violence and the violence the list keeps going on and on and on but for today, I would like to focus on intimate partner violence. As violence that occurs in an intimate relationship uh, between intimate partners, be the uh, boyfriends and girlfriend just dating, courting, or um, marriage, you know. And um, like I said, recently we've had a lot of incidences that, you know, calls for concern, concern and the spotlight is on intimate partner violence, gender-based violence, the world over, and Nigeria can be no different. Now, I think, and permit me to air my thoughts, and if you stay with me through this video, you might be convinced to think as I think. I actually think that intimate partner violence is uh, a kind of violence, a monster that every one of us has contributed in building, you know, in creating one way or the other. And I think that all hands need to be on deck to put an end to intimate partner violence. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the causes, how we've created this monster and possible solutions. You know, now intimate partner violence can happen anywhere. Go on a date with someone um, and he decides to abuse you probably in a public resto restaurant or you know, in school, it can happen anywhere. But it happens in the home a lot, domestic violence. Uh, for the big homicides as well. Okay, now, so talking about um, intimate partner violence, how does this start? Uh, why, uh, why would people even perpetrate this kind of violence? Uh, one of the ways, or one of the causes of intimate partner violence I want to mention today is uh, modeling, modeling of violent behaviors. Now, research has shown that um, a, a lot of children who grew up in homes where they experienced violence, on, on either of their parents who grow up to be violent themselves. Uh, permit me to say about 90% of them, it's just a few of them that would see that situation and decide to grow up differently. Most others, unconsciously, will also replicate these violent behaviors 
when they eventually get married. So I want to ask you watching this video, are you sure you're not creating a monster, a monster, a violent person by your behaviors? Are you being violent to your partner? And it does not stop, start and stop with hitting your partner. Now hitting your partner is more or less the worst of them all, but it doesn't stop there. Verbal violence, disrespect of your partner, you know, putting down your partner, you know, and all of this. When you do this in front of your children or in an, when your children grow up in an environment where this prevails, they are likely to do the same when they get married. So we should stop modeling these behaviors, okay? Now, why do why are people violent? Why, where does this come from? You know, uh, I want to look at some of the causes. Now, for the men, one of the major causes, men or women anyways, of intimate partner violence is actually a poor self-esteem. We spoke about growing up in that kind of environment and having a poor self-esteem. Now due to whatever reasons, whether it's due to your upbringing again, whether it's due to uh, an imbalance, a difference between your ideal self and your real self, who you want to be and who you turned out to be, you know, it's not the same. And then because of that, you have a poor self-esteem when you look at your colleagues and your friends and the dreams that you had, you see that you've not fulfilled them and you have a poor self-esteem, you might begin to take it out on your partner, okay? So poor self-esteem is one of the major causes of gender-based violence. And I think that one of the things we can do, first of all, we should realize that this life is not a competition. You're not in competition with anyone. And like they say, like the Bible says, the race is neither to the sweet you know, or the need the battle to the strong, but God that gives grace, you know. So it's not because you didn't work hard enough, it's not because, uh, I do not know, but those things happen sometimes. And the only way to solve your problem is of uh, living with the poor self-esteem all your life, is to try to work hard to overcome whatever it is that's responsible for you having a poor self-esteem. You, uh, you find out that you have more incidences involving women than men. And so uh, sometimes I might just say, why do men, I might refer to the men more. So why do people, men, met out this intimate partner by us? One of the major causes or what the reason behind this is they want to uh, establish control. They want to maintain control over their partner. And when they feel that like they're running out of control, one way they would do, you know, uh, uh, try to maintain that control is um, through violence. And like I said, it's because they have a poor self-esteem that they, that they see a need to maintain. As a matter of fact, kudos to all the strong men out there who would never put their hand on the woman, who respects women and will not even talk down on their women. I mean, when you talk down on your women, whether in private or in public, you're talking down on yourself because the two have become one. I mean, so if you put down your wife, you're putting down yourself. So put us to the strong men is actually a sign of strength to refuse to hit a woman. I mean, physically, men are built heavier and stronger than women. So you're not proving anything by physically uh, violating a woman. You know, you're not proving you're not proving that you're strong when you physically violate a woman or you're violent with a woman, you hit a woman or beat a woman. You no, know, it doesn't make you strong. It actually shows weakness. It actually shows a lack of self-control. You know, and I'm sure you tell me the women talk too much and blah blah blah. We'll get to that maybe in, in this video, maybe not, but it's no reason to be violent against a woman. Yeah, you know, so you don't need to maintain control. Marriage is a partnership, you know, and if you see your your spouse as an equal. And then you walk towards making the marriage work. You know, nobody, there's no lord and king in marriage. The husband is a king, the wife is a queen. Okay. Now, what other cause of gender uh, intimate partner violence is there? Now, when there's um, inequality in uh, either education, one partner is uh, more highly educated than the other, especially when the man is more highly educated than the, the wife, he sees the wife not as an equal, as a partner she should be, but as a subordinate, as, um, I don't know if you say a slave or something, and then it feels the need to act that out, you know. That's why when we get married, we should try and to ensure that there's not such a wide difference in the education between spouses. It actually leads to some imbalance. You know, you, you need to work together, and the Bible says can two work together except they agree. If there's such a, a great, huge difference in, um, a lot of things except the spouse is strong enough to try to build that woman up to his status you know there will be that difference and it might lead to frustration and might lead to the man uh, or 
being violent on the woman. Now another cause of gender-based violence is difference in socioeconomic status. When one rich man somewhere comes to marry um, a lady from a humble background and you feel like, no, we are not equals, I'm better than you, I'm richer, I'm more educated. I mean, it goes hand in hand, education and socioeconomic status. Yeah, so if there's a way to bridge this gap and to ensure that the gap in education and socioeconomic status is not too wide, it is better for marriage. Now, there are a whole lot of other things uh, that cause gender-based violence, you know. Uh, society, you know, society, every, you go everywhere and you hear it's a man's world, it's a man's world. It looks like society encourages uh, intimate partner violence, really when the man is a perpetrator. And, you know, most times, knowingly or unknowingly, we encourage this because when the woman tries to speak up, you begin to condemn her and look for reasons why she caused it. And if the woman leaves her marriage, she becomes a bad woman that could not stay in her marriage. And uh, parents will tell their daughters, make sure you don't stay with that friend that couldn't stay in her marriage. Uh, the friends who alienate the, 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 their friend say, okay, because your marriage broke up, you want to come and break up ours. And the society begins to treat that woman who ha had experienced uh, intimate partner violence and decided to walk away as um, a, a bad person, you know. And so that makes us want to stay. You know, so society has contributed and uh, played a huge role in encouraging without knowing intimate partner violence. And it shouldn't be so. This is the time that we begin to make a change. This is the time that we begin to encourage women, men as the case may be, to speak up and to take action. Okay, I'm not encouraging divorce, but if you're being violated, if you're experiencing intimate partner violence in marriage, you can get separated for a while and give your partner the time for reflection. And after a while, if there's a change and you know you see reasons, you can get back together. But first of all, save your life and leave. All of these women who have women who have died in um, uh, marriages due to intimate partner violence, if they had been separated for a while, uh, you know, or even separated, if if you can, if you can walk, you know, they would have been able to save the situation. So if you have to separate for a while, please do so. Society has encouraged gender-based violence. Another thing that has uh, led to an increase in gender-based violence is our traditional marital rights, where a man comes to marry a woman and he's asked to pay so much, such a huge sum of money, and sometimes he has to borrow money from friends, he has to use up all his savings just to pay the bride price. And each time the friends come asking him for the loan, to repay the loan, he gets upset and he might take it out on the woman. Or whenever he looks at his bank account and see, you know, how much he had to spend marrying the woman, he begins to treat the woman as a property instead of as a partner. So I think that we have to review and take a second look at our traditional marital rights. You're not selling out your daughter for Christ's own sake. There's no need asking for such huge amounts of money and then putting the new couple into stress, you know, and then making the man feel like, okay, if I spend all this money on her, she's my property. No, we should look for a way to put an end to this. I mean, it's not right. It's just not right, okay? And we encourage it when we do that. Another thing, another way that we encourage gender-based violence is using religion, telling the woman that uh, you know, divorce is unacceptable, and, and I'm a Christian, and I believe that uh, divorce is, is unacceptable, and I believe that there are many issues in marriage that we can work on, you know, and remain together, come back together, but not physical violence. When somebody is beating you, hitting your head on the wall, and you stay there and keep mute, I don't think that that's what it should be. There should be a solution. The church should actually step in and stop the man. And we should encourage women to speak up in the churches. You know, the pastors, the pastor's wives, and all of these keep telling the women you have to stay there in spite of what is happening. And when these women end up dying in this situation, they get blamed, And but by then it's too late. You know, God loves the man as much as he loves the woman. You know, and if Jesus saw you fit to die for you, then what do you think? That he wants to sit down there and see you suffer in the hands of a man? And let's not, you know, cheat ourselves. We will make mistakes. People make error in the choice of partners. And when you've made this mistake, try to work it out. But if it does not work, especially if the man is being physically, physically violent, please separate for a while. Okay, yeah, and please, it's high time we begin to tell the truth about these things. God said, love your wife as you love your own self. I've not seen a person, a sane person, that would hit him also or takes a, a knife to cut himself or himself or, you know, would be violent against himself. So if you love your wife, you can be violent against her. And if you're not loving your wife, you're already, you know, going against God's commandment. We are not saying get divorced, we're saying get separated for a while. And after a while, 
if it's possible, you can get back together. If the person changes, maybe sees a psychologist if he needs uh, th therapy or does something and you, you believe and you're sure that there is change, then you can change, you can get back together. But when your life is in danger, separate because whilst you stayed up with the children, you're creating monsters out of the children because they're going to suffer psychological trauma and they're going to perpetrate these behaviors when they grow up, they will be psychologically imbalanced. So please, do what you can whilst you can. Actually, another reason for intimate partner violence or why women would choose to stay in a violent relationship is their poor financial status or the fact that the woman is not working. I mean, the, the issue of self-esteem goes both ways on the, on the perpetrator and on the survivor or the victim, you know. When women get married and they're not working, they don't have any source of income, and even if their partner is being violent, they find it difficult to leave because, I mean, where would they go? And that's one of the, qu the questions I'm going to answer at the later part of this video. You're not alone and even if you don't have a job and you don't know where to go, if you're in a violent relationship and your life is uh, threatened, you can call the helplines I'm going to show later on in this video probably in the second part of the video and you get help you get a temporary getaway and eventually we hope to be able to provide a permanent getaway for women who would need long-term getaway from um, violent partners so one message I want to pass across is that no matter who you're married to you should have some handwork every woman should have a source of income I mean going out every day to work and to mix up with other people actually builds your self-esteem so don't stay there and say oh, oh my husband is uh, can provide for me I don't need to work and then you're not doing anything I mean if he decides to abuse you to get violent there's gonna be nothing you can do because you cannot leave okay so please please get yourself a job any man telling you to quit your job uh, I mean you should just have something doing something that brings you your own income don't get married and get so excited that you don't look for a job or you don't do something. I mean, that's not going to help you at all. That's not going to be good for you at all. Okay, away from that, I feel that sometimes even the, the survivors, you know, encourage or accomplices to these violent crimes. And by, how do I mean, you know, by keeping quiet. When you're being, uh, uh, somebody's being violent in a relationship and you keep quiet. You are encouraging the person to be to continue the act or you know to be even more violent because he knows you won't tell anybody he's safe you're covering up for him time has come for us to stop doing this speak out speak out speak to somebody talk to somebody if you cannot talk to any family or friend they are the helplines out there like i said we're going to put out you can talk to some people some ngos talk to human rights commission talk to feeder you know talk to somebody don't stay quiet and in this um, social media age, the husband just finished beating you blue and black uh, on a Thursday. You go to work lying that you had an accident, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then the next two days is his birthday and you take to social media to celebrate him. Oh, he's the best husband in the world. He does this and you cook up a lot of lies and put it out there just to create an impression. Who are you trying to impress for Christ's own sake? Your life is at stake. When he says that the more he beats you, the more you praise him on social media, it means you're giving him a, an incentive to beat you more. You're rewarding that bad behavior. So he's going to continue to beat you up. I don't know who did this to us. We are not competing, competing out there on social media. You don't owe anybody an explanation. You don't owe, you don't even have to put your life all out there for anyone. I mean, we've come through it. We've made those mistakes. There were times when I felt like I had to post a whole lot of stuff about my home, about my kids, about everything that was going on around me. But now we know that it's even risky to do so. And there are a whole lot of reasons not to put yourself all out on social media. So hold back some. And don't go celebrating somebody who has been violent to you, who has beaten you, who, who, who is... Who doesn't love you nobody will beat up somebody that they love so stop with that lies of he loves me and some people even say that if their boyfriends do not beat them up it means he doesn't love them something is wrong with that kind of um uh mindset who, who even who bred these people with this mindset you know so what i'm trying to say today speak out talk to someone do not encourage your partner to be violent by staying mute and uh, society stop uh stigmatizing um um, uh, survivors of intimate partner violence of gender-based violence stop stigmatizing them stop making them feel ashamed and stop shutting them up i mean they're not the ones to be ashamed the perpetrators are the ones should be ashamed to be ashamed the rapist the man who hits a woman that man should be ashamed not the woman but society makes the woman feel ashamed stop 
making the woman feel ashamed. Stop victimizing victims, okay? Stop blaming the victims. Uh, stop giving perpetrators reasons to continue. Stop hiding them. Stop keeping quiet. We all need to speak out collectively against gender-based violence. The time has gone. We can't continue to keep quiet. So I'm encouraging everybody out there to speak. And if you see that you have a problem of violence, see a, psych a psychotherapist. I know it's not in our culture to do so, but I mean, the time has come. Get help. Let's try to get to the root of this uh, violence, why are you being violent? Is it that the behavior was modeled to you as a child? You need to get to the root and begin to solve it from the root. Uh, is it because of low self-esteem? Sometimes too, men use um, these violent behaviors to cover up their own bad behaviors. A cheating husband is most likely to be violent and to be controlling and trying to box up the wife because he's trying to cover up his cheating behavior. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that spouses do out there, you know? The pornography, they do pornography, they, they, they have sex indiscriminately, and one way of covering up these terrible behaviors of death is to suppress and oppress the woman so she cannot speak and she cannot get out. I mean, the time has come for us to speak out. If you're a victim of uh, intimate partner violence, speak out. You can reach me uh, privately and I will be able to get help to you. I'll be able to connect you with people that can help you, whether you're in need of shelter, whether you're in need of um, legal uh, services, whether you're in need of uh, psychosocial services, counseling services, psychotherapy, please hit me up in my DM, especially if you reside in Nigeria. Send me a private message in the comment section, speak to me, or go to my handles uh, on Instagram at uh, the psychologist ng, on Facebook at the psychologist ng, and also on Twitter at the psychologist ng. And let's see how we can help you walk out of this. No one is happy to see a divorce, no one wants to break the marriage. All we want to ensure is that. You are safe and alive. Your life is important to every one of us. So we want to see you be alive. So please, seek for help. Do not be ashamed. Speak out, okay? Speak out. And do not encourage anyone to continue being violent towards you by protecting him, by keeping quiet and celebrating. Um, uh, I think we're going to end here for today. Emotions are really running high. And uh, we are on to a lot of interesting, interesting topics on the Psychologist NGTV. Keep it locked and have a pleasant pleasant week there I, meet, I wish you more wins i wish you love and light and all that you wish yourself take care bye love you